Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Nuggets News. Today I'm excited to walk you through how to use the FTX exchange and we're gonna place a trade and show you how to do a stop loss and a take profit, all those different order types. So this is a fantastic new exchange that has popped up recently and they've got a range of different products and coins we can trade as well as different tokens which I'm gonna explain for you today. Now whenever a new exchange pops up, you should be skeptical, but if you've watched that interview we've done with Sam who's the ex Wall Street quant trader who was sick of how bad other exchanges were so he built his own you know the backstory to FTX and I've now got Australian friends that have personally got jobs there so I can certainly uh, put a bit more trust in them than a lot of other exchanges now the second problem new exchanges face is lack of liquidity but because these guys have got an OTC desk and because of their affiliation with Alameda research which is a crypto quant trading fund they've got a lot of volume already and if we head over to volume monitor you'll see they've done over a billion dollars today just behind Binance and they're actually showing you which of the other exchanges uh, are maybe doing the dirty and cheating on the volume that they're reporting there. So another cool little uh, tab there that FTX have come out with. So once you've opened an account and I've got a link in the description below to get you a big discount on fees, depending on how much you want to trade and withdraw, there is certain tiers where you don't have to KYC or you do over a given limit. So once you have KYC'd, um, it is going to allow you to withdraw a lot more, but you can still deposit and withdraw and trade smaller amounts uh, without that actual KYC process. So if you're a beginner, you may have never even funded a trading account before. So this isn't really an account where you go to to buy one token and swap it to another token. This is an actual trading platform. So having said that, there are a number of coins that we can uh, deposit here and these will act as collateral in our account to trade against. So we could put in Bitcoin for example, but we can still trade Ethereum. It doesn't really matter what collateral we have. And they've got their own native FTT token. Most people are familiar with that BNB token for Binance and you get discount on fees. This is very similar and again, there are different tiers of, of discounts and a lot of other reasons to hold FTT. So full disclosure, as you can see, um, I own some here in my trading account, uh, as well as some uh, in my hardware wallet, because this is an ERC20 token that you can store safely for longer term. Now, when we have coins on here, we can easily convert them from one to another. So let's click on say convert our Bitcoin and if we think Bitcoin is going to fall in price, we can convert it over to USD or, or Tether, Tether out as people call it uh, and click the amount or the entire amount if we, if we click on max and we can just convert that um, with one easy click of a button there. So nice and easy um, to, to deposit if you want to send some Bitcoin to this exchange, it's just going to show you Bitcoin address, copy and paste that, um, send your Bitcoins there or if you're on your phone, you can even scan that uh, mobile QR code code, which is just the visual representation of your Bitcoin address. So I hope that all uh, makes sense. If it's the first time you are doing some trading, let's head over and have a look at the different futures or indexes that we can trade. So perpetual future just means that this is an ongoing uh, contract where people are, are betting if the price of Bitcoin is going to go up or down. And we call that going long or short, depending if we think it's going to go up or or down respectively. So not only do they have Bitcoin, Ethereum, and a great range of coins that we can trade against US dollars, which not many other exchanges offer, a lot of these are trading against Bitcoin pairs rather than trading against the US dollar or Tether value. So that in of itself is pretty exciting, but it's these baskets, these sort of, they're like an ETF, like an exchange traded fund. We've got an altcoin index, uh, a mid cap index, a shit coin index of 60 low market cap coins, and things like this exchange token index that they've come out with that's a basket of exchange tokens. So they're gonna have more and more of these exciting products and let's put on a trade together. So if we think that altcoins in general, the top 10, the sort of larger cap market coins are gonna have a good bounce, then we would want to put on a long order or do what we call uh, buying here. Now, if we think it's gonna go down and we wanna sell or go short, we just do the opposite and we're betting that it's gonna go down. But for ease of uh, ex explaining this today, I'm just gonna put on a long. So let's say that we wanna put on an $1,000 order. We can just type $1,000 there. At the moment, each unit of this altcoin index, the basket of altcoins has a value of around $494, you can see. So it's telling us that we're gonna own two of these uh, altcoin baskets. 
It's telling me that that's on really low leverage. You know, I could trade much larger amounts if I like up to $100,000 there. And that's telling me that that would be on 30 times leverage because I've got about $3,000 collateral in my account at the moment. So if we want to buy this when it goes a bit lower and the price is currently around 494, as I said, let's type in 475. We've got the $1,000 amount. That's my limit order. Click on post and that is going to add it to the order book. And you can see down here, it's going to sit in my open orders. The other option I have is just clicking a market order. If you're rushing and you want to get in, that is just going to throw your order into the market and take the best price that is available. In the order book here, we can see all the buyers and all the sellers that are lined up at higher prices. Um, and there's plenty, plenty of volume here, as you can see. So within you know less than 0.1%, there's often $100,000 or more on the, the bid and the ask. So you can get in and out of uh, large orders quite easily on these larger um, more traded products. But if you want to trade a really low small cap coin, be careful of the volume uh, if you're using leverage and the size of the trade you put on because there might be a lot of slippage getting in and out of orders. Now, let's say that the market does get down to our level of uh, 475 and that trade gets filled. If we're going to bed, we might want to put in a stop loss and we also might want to put in an order on where to take profit if it bounces while we're asleep. So if we head back over to the order form, and we click uh, stop market or stop limit. So stop market, again, is just gonna put the order into the market when it hits my trigger price. So let's say if we're wrong and it gets down to 450, that is just gonna trigger an, a market order at the best available price. Slightly more advanced than that is once we hit 450, we might want that uh, order to get executed at say, $450 or, or, or better. So look, that's a little bit more advanced for you traders out there. Um, but again, we can do that. And what we wanna make sure we click is that we are selling because at that stage we're gonna have on a position and we wanna put it on as reduce only. So we don't wanna ever make a mistake and put this on as a new trade. We wanna have this so it's only reducing any current orders we have on and that's going to be important when we um, talk about the take profit as well so let's click on sell and that is going to place that and here it's going to show up as my stop loss orders now again if we have that trade get filled and it doesn't go down to our stop loss and it heads in the right direction all's going well and we're making money on our trade we might want to take some profits so our options are a trailing stop and that we can choose that that's gonna trail behind the trade once it gets filled, say $10 behind. Uh, and, and that's gonna, if it ever pulls back $10 after it's run the right direction, that's where that order is gonna get filled. But I prefer doing a take profit, uh, just a market order. So if we hit 500, again, we wanna sell and we only want that to reduce. Because if we've put on that order and then we've been stopped out, and then the market goes the other way and we wake up and we find that this order's been filled even though we didn't have a trade on. So all of a sudden, we're now got a position on and we're short and we're betting the market wants to go down. That's not what we want. So we only want this position to get filled if the intent is to reduce the trade that we currently have on. So again, step further, we can turn that into a limit order, put the trigger price and then the limit of the price that we want to, uh, let's say maybe 510. Uh, let's click on sell and that is going to place a second stop loss order. Both of these are reduce only though, so it's fine that we've got two orders in there. So I hope that makes sense um, on how to trade the different uh, indexes and stops and take profit orders. The other thing I'll just mention quickly are these tokens. And then I want to talk about the volatility index, which is really cool. So They've got Moon and Doom tokens, which move 10 times as much in either direction as the underlying token, and then Bull and Bear, which move three times as much. The final product I've got is a hedge token. So that's just a, a one-time short or bet that it's gonna go down. And what that does is hedge you out. So if you own one ETH and then you buy one Ethereum hedge token, if the price of ETH goes down, the hedge token goes up and you've remained with the same amount of value. So you're just hedging your portfolio is the way to think of that.
Now, all of these are ERC20 tokens, so that's why you can actually withdraw them and send them to an Ethereum, your hardware wallet, your ledger, uh, but these are not to be traded long term, and a lot of people found this out the hard way recently. So if we click on the price chart here, what we can see is that when things are going up in the right direction, you know, the altcoin index went crazy from 6,000 to 20,000 in a couple of days. But when things go against you, and this falls 10 times as much, you know, it dropped from 20,000 down to $60 in just a week. So these things have got really big what we call drag and decay because in percentage terms, you know, when they're going up and down all the time, they get eroded. And the easiest example I can give to you of that is if something's $100 and it goes to $80, it's actually got to go back up $20, but that's 25%. It's no longer a 20% fall. And because of that difference, that's why these things have got such heavy drag in both the Moon uh, and the Doom token. So unless you're an experienced trader and you're going to trade these short term, I don't re recommend uh, trading these. The final thing I want to mention is the BTC Move contract. And this is a volatility contract that we shared a trade with members last night. There was fantastic trade in the end. So what the volatility move contract does is people are placing bets on how far the Bitcoin price is going to move in a given day. So the daily candle opens at 10 a.m. in Australian time, but midnight UTC time. And when you're on your trading view charts, uh, which we have integrated here in the background, you can see that you know the daily candle, it has a, a price where it opens and then a price where it closes. And what we're doing is betting on how much that's gonna move. It doesn't matter if it moves up or down $100, we're betting that that move will be $100. So let's let's go down the time frames, have a look at a five minute chart. Uh, last night, we were trading uh, in that narrow range. Bitcoin was sort of in a tightening pattern and I placed a trade recommendation uh, for our members when it was actually trading at 190 here. So this was yesterday's contract, uh, which isn't up. So every day these contracts settle to that price and you can make bets on them the day before. Uh, here we see the 28th for tomorrow, which is already trading. So you might be able to trade these 24 to 48 hours in advance. But basically, I wanted to make a bet that Bitcoin was going to move more than the $190 that people were currently betting. And that it, you know, it ran up to $670 because we broke out of that tightening pattern and we'd moved $600 away from yesterday's price. So this is a really great product. Uh, at the moment, this is trading for $250. You know, if we have another leg down in Bitcoin, Bitcoin could move $500 or $1,000. So you can bet that that's going to happen. If you think Bitcoin's not going to be very volatile, you can short this, um, sell this contract. And if we only move $100 that day, that's going to go down and, and settle at 100 You can trade in or out of this at any time. You don't have to wait for that daily candle to close and this contract to expire. It's freely tradable. So this is the first volatility product that I know of in the crypto world, and I think it's absolutely awesome. I've heard they're coming out with a hash rate product, so you can bet if the amount of mining going on in the crypto world is going to go up and down, and I've heard that they're coming out with options as well. So guys, if you want a discount on fees, there is that affiliate link below that sends me a few dollars and does get you a discount if you plan on doing some trading. But all in all, I think this is an amazing exchange, plenty of different order types, heaps of features, nice and easy to use. Uh, let me know what you think if you've traded on here and I hope you've enjoyed that tutorial. If you have, smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, share this video around and thanks for tuning in guys. Cheers.